Hello, everyone. My name is Katie Seaborn, and today I'll be presenting on behalf of my co-authors Johanna Mahonen and Yvonne Rogers on our paper entitled Scaling Up to Tackle Low Levels of Urban Food Waste Recycling. Recently, there's been a call in HCI to address big questions such as food waste recycling, a massive global problem we must all start to grapple with. Our idea was to use behavior change methods combined with novel technologies, but this raised the question of how to do it at scale. Scaling up is the process by which the scope of a project is considered in terms of how to make a societal impact. So far, efforts have focused on crowdsourcing and other large and crowd-based initiatives, as well as designing prototypes in parallel. Scaling up tends to involve working with a large number of diverse stakeholders. Working in a scaled up multi-stakeholder context is not easy. We have to grapple with the complexity, not just of the problem being tackled, but the stakeholder ecology as well. A central part of our research was citizen engagement. The process by which researchers, practitioners, or civic entities work with a specific community on a community-driven project. Typically in HCI, this has involved initiatives started within, championed by, and even led by members of communities and citizens. Recently, there has been increasing calls by governments, organizations, and others with power over communities to involve HCI researchers in efforts to tackle larger scale societal challenges like food waste recycling. This means that we must be sensitive to power dynamics as well as ensure that whatever we make is appropriate and sustainable. From a design perspective, a clear strategy for tackling food waste recycling behaviors is behavior change methods. In the past, HCI researchers have looked into various public and larger scale behavior change ideas. Outside of HCI, companies like Volkswagen have looked into the fun factor through various public installations involving little or no tech. Our challenge in this project was to discover whether and how we can scale such approaches even higher for potentially a societal level impact. The Food Waste Project was a collaborative urban innovation program to improve food waste recycling levels on housing estates, for which previous efforts were not successful. This involved working with a diverse set of stakeholders, including the mayor's office, the service provider, an urban innovation organization, ourselves at the university, and three local boroughs. Citizens were placed at the center of the project and accessed by engaging residents on the selected sites or housing estates. The partner team refers to the stakeholders responsible for leading the project, and this includes ourselves. Originally, we and the other partner stakeholders had agreed to take a user-centered and citizen engagement approach, focusing efforts on directly involving citizens even though we carefully planned around this, we very quickly discovered that we had to shift our approach to adapt to the real world. Adapting our methodology meant turning to reflexivity. Reflexivity means accounting for our actions, decisions, thoughts, and worries when engaging in field work. We were then able to condense our learnings into a framework to provide insights and practical guidance to other HCI researchers. Next, I'll present the key challenges in a linear narrative of the winding path through the project. We quickly discovered several disconnects between the stakeholders whose views and attitudes towards each other were mismatched. Being strangers, asking people to do a lot for us, even with monetary compensation and towards improving conditions on the estate, led to a breakdown in engagement. After seven months, we had to change tack. How could we achieve our goals without burdening or forcing people to join us? We decided to use an indirect method, observation, particularly of the food waste bins. Not only did this not burden residents, but we realized that this was perhaps a more objective way of getting at people's behaviors as well. The result of doing this led us to discover three key factors for our design process, making the bins more hygienic, more convenient, and providing some kind of awareness raising solution about food waste. Within the partner team, a curious and unexpected issue cropped up, compensation. As part of our normal process in academia, we assumed we would be responsible for it and provide vouchers or cash. The service provider stakeholder wished to split the cost, 
but couldn't invoice it on their system. They instead suggested providing their own merchandise, but this was highly unusual for us and raised concerns about us getting ethics approval for it. We considered perhaps an orchid in an eco-friendly reusable vase, but when to give it, especially when our protocols had multiple parts. We can't split a plant and we couldn't provide more than one. We were at a crossroads. The way forward appeared unexpectedly in a meeting with another stakeholder from the council who explained that they always provided monetary compensation. This was then used as evidence by the service provider to convince upper management to go with vouchers. Hence how a seemingly small, indeed trivial aspect of research can create friction and require much effort and spontaneous help to resolve. As user-centered designers and researchers, we had to confront and grapple with our failures to directly involve the residents, the citizens at the heart of our engagement work. In particular, our co-design workshops only involved members from the other stakeholder groups. We provided starter ideas and predefined criteria to encourage resident-centered decisions in the workshops. In the end, we had a further dilemma. The stakeholders desired a low-cost, low-tech solution a persuasive character bin. We knew this was not likely to be seen as novel by our peers in HCI. We experienced a kind of cognitive dissonance, even going to the extent of planning a high-tech novel solution in parallel to this work. In the end, we had to accept shifting gears about our contribution. Typically in HCI research, we are responsible for user evaluation. In this project, we handed over the evaluation for the most part to other stakeholders. Contractors were hired to collect and carefully weigh all waste over a 16-week period. From these data and comparisons, we were able to show a change in food waste recycling behavior. We were also able to estimate the amount in savings and potential revenue created by, for example, using the food waste to generate electricity. Using longitudinal data, we were able to see the extent of the novelty effect and where it became stable afterwards. Reflecting critically on our experiences allowed us to develop a simple three-part framework for scaling up HCI research. Scaling up the people, scaling up the method, and scaling up the impact. In the multi-stakeholder scaled up context, it becomes our responsibility to cultivate relationships across the board. This involves taking on new roles that might be unexpected. For instance, we acted as a kind of urban planner of the multi-stakeholder ecology. We also acted as a kind of synchronizer, not only in terms of synchronizing our research methodologies and our practice, but also in developing social protocols. Scaling up the method can mean re-examining what we wish to measure and how. For us, it meant the idea of citizen engagement in our original plan procedures. We also had to deal with the small and large effects of interweaving our various infrastructures. For example, the issue of compensation. Scaling up can also mean handing over evaluation, either in part or totally, to other stakeholders and placing trust in them to collect the data that we need in order to answer our research questions. Scaling up the impact means finding evidence that meets the scale of the impact that you want to see. This can mean moving from local solutions to local problems to the idea of local impact for societal problems. There's also the possibility for powerful combinations of methods and metrics. In our case, we were able to combine economic forecasting, large-scale data collection, and user-centered design methods, weaving together evaluations of impact in ways that wouldn't normally be possible in HCI practice. In conclusion, scaling up such interaction design projects requires rethinking how we work with others in unpredictable ways, adapting our methods. We have to change our roles and our ways of doing HCI practice in order to ensure success. Indeed, dealing with the unexpected is a key feature of this kind of work, but success is possible, even if it's unconventional and different from what was planned or imagined.